keep track of anything, not even with my NFL team, because this schooling is, which I'm almost to the finish line with this semester, which I'm so glad, taking three math courses all at the same time, economics, uh, accounting, and business statistics. Not a smart thing. Do not recommend it to anybody. <laughs> statistics? Business statistics, yeah. Oh, shoot. That was the funnest part of my, uh, what do you call it? My um, college career? Oh, uh, statistics is fun. I mean, it's interesting. It's just that, it, you know, when you when you have to do the math, and most of ours is done in Excel, so you have to figure out all your Excel formulas. And, you know, it's like right now uh, I'm working on where you, you know, find the y-axis and find your slope, your y-axis for two different data points. So that's kind of what I was just doing before I jumped on this podcast. I still got about four more questions I got to go on that. But yeah. Well, thanks for taking the time to jump on here. I appreciate it. Yeah. I just now figured out we are recording now. I had to push the button, too. So. Uh-huh. So no <laughs> recording for the beginning of it, huh? I don't, I don't know, man. What a disaster. <laughs> hey, growing pains, growing pains. That's all I can say. <laughs> I absolutely love this human being on the other end of this conversation, man. He has my back through legitimately everything. It's crazy. Um, But yeah, uh, there's not much going on other than people getting married. Yeah, uh, I saw something the other day. Is something going on with our goalies? Because uh, it said something about uh, Dallas. We have a problem with our goalie situation. What's going on there? Uh, honestly, the only thing I know is you have Jake Ottinger and Casey DeSmith now. Anything beyond that, I have no idea. Um, yeah, I think what it was trying to kind of make insinuations of is that, you know, yeah, Ottinger's got the starting right now. Oh, no. Of course, we've got, it sounds like we've got uh, the emergency warnings are going off at the moment. Is that on your end or my end? That's me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't feel oh. bad. Mine's probably fixing to go off here in just a second as well. <laughs> yeah, there it goes. I got mine off pretty quick, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I might have to cut out a lot of this first part of the episode. <laughs> or should I just leave it in? I don't know. Um, But yeah, goalie situation. There's not much. Nah, I don't know. Uh, unless it's going down in Cedar Park, down there with you. Yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't even really look at it, to be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, I think maybe, you know me, like, I'm the Dallas Cowboys fan, so I'm at the point in life where I'm like, show me. So, with so many people being gone from the team which is only a handful. I'm uncertain about Wedgwood now. I'm uncertain about uh, Matt Murray. You know, that those two are gone, and I was banking on Matt Murray. I, I said that over and over in the show, that yeah. if Wedgwood was gone, we'd bank on him. And now they're both gone, and now you got Casey DeSmith, who was decent, shall we say, in Pittsburgh. <laughs> But other than that, I got nothing. And as far as the defense goes, I believe it was Hockenpah that ended up getting hurt with us, if I remember correctly. And then he signed elsewhere, and now he may not even play again. I dodged a bullet there. I mean, did we, though? Because we also lost, what was it? Three of our defensemen? And the only upgrade we have is Dumba? <laughs> so, and. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm always excited for, you know, the offseason and then the season to 
to start back up. But I don't know, you know, I, I was kind of excited there for a little bit, but now I'm looking at some of the moves that we've made and some of the losses that we've had. But, oof, I'm kind of nervous at this point. Well, let me ask you this. Who do you think is going to be our biggest loss here in Dallas? Mm. Uh. Mind you, I'm not going to argue your point. I'll try and find a way to back it up. <laughs> well, no, I'm trying to even think of who all are. I'm, right now, I'm in the process of trying to think of who are all of our losses are. Can you run down the list real quick for me? Like I said, I've been kind of out of things. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, I got you. Hang on. I'm going to pull it up right now. Uh, free agent. Ah. Am I still recording, by the way? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear me, so that's good. <laughs> I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Wait, I just answered you. Whoa. That they, well, at least somebody will have fun listening to us, maybe. Um, <laughs> let's see. We've got free agent tracker. There we go. From NHL.com, if I can get the stars in particular, we've got Carolina, Chicago, Colorado, ABCD. There you go. We've got Vlad Bushkin. We signed him for three years. Duchesne is back. The Smith Lundquist is back. Okay, so you got an uncertain Lundquist, right? Right. And for them, I mean, in his place, you lost Hawk and Paw. You lost Joe Pavelski, who retired. Derek Pouliot signed with Tampa Bay. That sucks. I was hoping he would stay. Scott Reedy left, Jared Rossberg left, all these are, uh, what do you call it, minor league guys. Craig Smith went to Chicago, Sam Steele re-signed, Wedgwood, as we know, left. Bay Ruther was not re-signed or offered, I don't think. Nick Kamano, they let walk, those are Cedar Park guys as well, so is Max Ellis. Um, other than that, I believe Hockenpah, Carlstrom, Murray, and um, well, it's a toss-up between Pavelski and Wedgwood being the biggest well, loss. I would, I would say Pavelski's going to be the biggest loss because, number one, you're losing not only an amazing player, but you're also losing a, a, a hell of a leader. On the ice. For sure. You know, and somebody who's not not only uh, you know willing to, but you know able to take these young guys under their wing, as you saw what he did with young Wyatt Johnson. Oh, for sure. But but dig this: I mean, since uh, he's gone, they're talking about putting Wyatt up in the top line. That could be a good thing, though. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about Pavelski being gone being a bad thing, and yes, it is because leadership and you know big playability, and he's just a beast. But you unleash Wyatt Johnston up there, so you got Hints, Robertson, and Wyatt Johnston. Oh my God! How terrifying is that? See, now you're starting to get me back excited because, like I said. I've been kind of out of things, so uh, you know my my only uh, thing that I can actually see or key off of is as I'm scrolling through Facebook every once in a while when I have the time to do so, and I'll see certain people post certain things or certain websites say certain things, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, what they were talking about about the issue we might have in in Dallas is that the the uh, and like I said, I'm not very familiar with who we brought in goal, goaltender-wise. But from what I understand, he may be actually somebody who can actually contend with Ottinger for the starting position. Uh, that's a tough one. Because... Like I said, I'm just basing off of what this article was saying. Yeah. No, I got you. 
Um, it, he could, but from the the little media availability thing that he did right after he signed here, he almost verbatim said that he wants to build a relationship with Otter and he wants to not be 1A, 1B, but he wants to be like a buffer sort of thing for Jake. And he wants the two to get along and sort of feed off of each other and grow together. And um, he has no intention for what I understood. That was a, quite a while ago now. He has no intention of even trying to unseat Jake as the starter. Yeah. Which is... Well, like I said, I, and it, it, it may have just been one of them. You know, there's those websites that, that always try to kind of start controversy where there is no controversy because that's just what they do. Uh, some yeah. people call it trolling. <laughs> <laughs> some people call it starting conversation, which it does help. It does. It, it does start a conversation. I personally don't. I don't see anybody coming in and, and actually challenging Ottinger. I think Ottinger is pretty solid in in his position as our starting goal goaltender. I mean, he's proven it the past few seasons. Yeah, he kind of had a, a slower start this last season. Once again, I still think he was still recovering over injury. Personally, I think they should have given him a little bit more of a break than what the what the Stars coaching staff did. But once again, I don't get paid to make those decisions. There's others that do. That, that, that do. So, you know. What on earth went on with Wedgwood while we're at it to just let him walk? For that matter, Matt Murray, why are both of them no longer with Dallas? Like, there's so many questions from last season, along with Jake. Well, I'll be honest with you. I didn't see enough. I mean, I was impressed with Matt Murray the couple times where we did see him, but I did not see enough to where I can sit there and go, oh, my God, that's such a horrible loss. I mean, <laughs> the, the coaching staff either saw or did not see something within him to pursue him uh, aggressively to where – you know, we felt like we needed to re-sign him or that would be a major key loss. So uh, it's it's hard to say what could have, should have, or whatever happened. I mean, uh, and I know I, I kind of figured we were eventually going to lose Wedgwood because he's just, he does show those signs of where he could be a starter in this league. Uh, you know, so... Yeah, I think he, he, he wants to move on to greener pastures and more power to him. And I get that, you know, nobody, nobody wants to know. Uh, I, I was watching a documentary the other day on Pete Rose or, you know, it's a, it's a series right now on one of my streaming services, I think Max or, you know, HBO Max. But anyway, and it's about Pete Rose and, and why he's not in the Hall of Fame. I'm not here to argue whether he should or shouldn't be or anything like that. But anyway, during this uh, interview or during this documentary, you know, it was talking about when he was with the uh, Montreal Expos and during the World Series or during the playoffs, I don't remember which one it was, but during, I, I know it was uh, game three because I remember he was uh, very upset about it. Uh, he did not, he was not in the lineup. You know, he's one of the high, at that point in time, if not, he was not the highest paid player, one of the highest paid players in the ma in Major League Baseball. And like he said, you know, I'm not here making this money to sit on a bench and watch the game. I'm here because I want to play. So, you know, it's possible that that could have played into things with Wedgwood. You know, he's, he's a player. He wants to play. You know, maybe he felt like he's grown and gone as far as he can with the stars. He's learned as much as he felt like he could. And, you know, he knows that Ottinger's the guy. So, you know, it's almost kind of like, you know, in the NFL, when you've got a decent backup quarterback and you've got a franchise starting quarterback ahead of him. Well, yeah, you know, that backup quarterback is eventually going to leave because they want to be the starter. Yeah, that's a solid point. And, I mean, now, go ahead. Now, Murray, I, I couldn't answer for Murray. I, 
I wish I could tell you what, 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 what went on with Murray. Something. Either either Murray just didn't feel like it was a fit in Dallas or, or something. The coaching staff didn't fit. He didn't fit. He didn't want to be in the minors anymore. He wants to move up. I don't know. Couldn't tell you. They got a goalie situation over there in Nashville now with the two of them over there. Oh, they do. They do. <laughs> and, you know, but, you know, and they may be one and two and, and maybe both of them will be vying for the starting position there and more power to them. I mean, you know, unfortunately, I, we've kind of moved on from them. Nothing against them. Thank you guys for the time and effort you put in for, for the stars and, the, and, and, and this organization, but you know, now we need to focus on our future and what's going on here. That's a solid point. Training camp's just a couple weeks away, too, by the way. Yes, it is. Is it going to be in Cedar Park again? Uh, yes. Uh, awesome. I think. Uh, I believe I saw Fort Worth discussed as well, and I can't make that, unfortunately, either. But, you know, it, it does make for a fun goalie situation for us because you got DeSmith, Ottinger, you got Poirier, you know, uh, I think it would be funny looking at Remy Poirier. I think it would be funny if he did so well that DeSmith was relegated to the AHL down there in Cedar Park. <laughs> well, wouldn't that be interesting? That's, that's kind of where my curiosity went. Because Poirier has done pretty well for himself. I mean, the goalies down there in Cedar Park are pretty decent as it is. But can you imagine, like, two, three, four people vying for that second goalie spot? It'll make things interesting. <laughs> yeah, it will. It, it, oh. The whole team now, I mean... You got big holes, but do you really got big holes? You got room for Maverick Bork now. Logan Stanko is going to stay up. What is this team going to look like come October? And for that that matter, what kind of impact is Matt Dumba going to have? See, that's what I'm excited to see. I want to see what's going to go on with Matt Dumba. Because like I said, you got to understand, this is a professional league. And, you know, players want to win. And if he can come in and he can help this team get over some of the humps that they've been going through and get us to that next level, nobody's going to be saying anything about that hit. (laughs) As soon as he lays somebody out, they're going to be praising him. Let's be real. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, like I said, you know, tip for tat. Honest and truly, it, it would be just like if, if and, and I know he's not, but I mean, it would just be the same thing if Jamie Benn were to leave and go um, to, uh, who were we playing when he laid that hit? Was that uh, the Golden Knights? I believe so, it yeah. Was, wasn't it? Yeah. So it would be like if he left and went to the Knights. You know, yeah, they'd be upset for a whole minute, but the minute he got, he went into the game and did something great for the team, nobody's going to complain about it. They're going to welcome him with open arms and be like, hey, welcome to the team. Great. Yay. We forgot all about that hit. You know, we forgot all about that unsportsmanlike play. Who cares? And hey, uh, unfortunately, that's how we as a fan base and every, or that's how most fans are of a fan base. And once again, I'll, I'll bring it back to Dallas. You know, when Dallas played the 49ers and Deion Sanders was a member of the 49ers, everybody hated him. Now he's one of the most <laughs> beloved players in Dallas. All because he stepped foot in Dallas. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, you know, and, and when he got to Dallas, it's not like he just got to Dallas, took a paycheck, and didn't do anything. See, that's the thing. You know, if Matt Dumba really wants to, you know, make this a good go of it, he's really got to put some effort into it, and he's got to make a couple key plays and some key games right off the bat. Like I said, if Deion Sanders came to Dallas and was a flub and didn't do as good as he did as for you know Dallas as he did for San Francisco, then we wouldn't be having this conversation about him. But because 
you know, he was a Pro Bowl player again when he came to Dallas, made the Pro Bowl. Uh, I believe he was uh, also uh, part of their, you know, first team, whatever, you know, all 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 decade team, if I'm not mistaken, on on defense. You know, and that was during his tenure in Dallas that he he earned that. You know, if he'd have gone to Dallas and just petered out, then we wouldn't be having this discussion. So, yes, I believe Matt Dumba can be a very positive thing on this team if some of you know, if everybody can just get past that hit and, you know, and he can get out there and do something, you know, spectacular in his first couple games or, you know, a couple key, key plays and things. See, the thing, the thing about Dumba is, you know, he he's the guy that, in his own words, is not afraid to go out there and make the play if somebody else won't, you know. And that was a fun little media scrum I was part of, dude. I enjoyed listening to him because, like, I I'm not one to, I mean, I am, but I'm not. I'll give somebody a chance. But I'm not gonna automatically go. Yeah, no, don't, don't bring him here unless it's Ryan Reeves. He is mm-hmm. a Vegas Golden Knight, or was, <laughs> and then Maple Leaf, I think, is where he went. In the time, in the last couple, yeah, in the last couple of seasons, we've seen him in two different uniforms. Is the point I'm yeah. trying to make, and everybody hates Ryan Reeves. Matt Dumba, on the other hand, Minnesota Wild, you know. The hit on Pavelski, eh. Then he signs in Dallas saying Dallas is a, a good chance for him to win, and most of all, he gets to get out of the cold. Like, that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get out of the cold, Dallas is definitely the place to do it. But that notwithstanding, sure. like, everybody was clamoring, including myself. I was the biggest one to say, we need some oomph behind us. You can't just skate around everybody and try to make pretty plays. You've got to hit. Yeah. Somebody saw that. Somebody in the higher up saw, and maybe I'm not just blowing smoke. I, I know I didn't put the bug in their ear, obviously, but somebody saw that we were missing something and they brought him in. And, you know, let, let's be honest, the, the last person that they had to suit up for the stars that I, that was willing to do it, it was Corey Perry. Mm-hmm. And Corey Perry was a hated guy too until he put the victory green on. And then they were about 50-50 on him and a lot of people say they miss him now. I think Dumba, from a Wild fan that I know herself, Dumba is somebody that you love to hate unless they're playing, unless he's playing for you. So... I mean, I'm ready. I told my dad as we were having a family dinner the day that the media availability was happening. I was like, you know, I'm ready to buy his jersey. Because from the media availability, he said that, like circling back around again, he said he was willing to do what other people aren't. And that's what Dallas has been missing, if you ask me. That's one of the key, you know, everybody can look and say goaltending, uh, they can let they can say, you know, offensive, defensive. No, one thing that this team has been missing is that attitude of having a player out there who's willing to do the things that people, other players are not willing to. For sure. I mean, uh, going back a few years, I don't know if you watched them, but Steve Ott, Dallas Star, he was. A little bit of a roughhouser. I won't say goon because he could score and he could, you know, make some good plays. But, you know, he would rough you up. And uh, there was another guy, may have even been him, I can't remember. There was another guy that would get under somebody's skin before that. Again, it may still be him. That would cuss somebody out in their native language and say, I'll F your mother. <laughs> like something like that, you know, you, you got to have something that'll get in, in your opponent's head. And Matt Dumba is the exact guy that can do it. Yeah. Like, I need that edge, that, that, that edgy player. And, and to, to bounce off that, if you think about it, 
wouldn't you be happy if somebody like Rupe Hintz had a bodyguard? Oh, yeah. Like, you're going to be going for Robertson, you're going to be going for Hintz, and then Matt Dumba steps foot on the ice and then instantly changes that. Well, like, you know, you put a Matt Dumba back there, and I'm not sure who they're going to put him with defensively, but could you imagine him on defense with any any defenseman, other defenseman that we have? Uh, and you have that first lineup of Wyatt Johnston, Rope Hintz, and uh, Robertson. So you've got a, an offensive juggernaut, and then you've got now a defense where, you, you know, they're going to challenge the opposing teams coming into our, you know, coming across that blue line in, or into into our zone. Oh, oh, yes, they are. Here's a wild little thought for you. You got Hence Robertson, Johnston. You got Miro Hayeskin in. And I don't know if this will happen. I doubt it will, to be honest with you. But what about putting Dumba right there? I'm in on it. I would I would love to see Dumba and Hayeskin together. It has me curious. I mean, again, I'm not the one in charge of making the line, so I doubt it'll happen. But I'm curious enough to see, would it work? I mean, we know Haskinen's going to go try and do what he do. Um, Dumba can be the guy that says, hey, step off. And then you got well, the speed of the rest of them. I'm sorry I cut you off. Oh, no, no, no. And, and we, we got to keep in mind, we have a coach, you know, in Pete DeBoer who's willing to experiment. <laughs> now we have the room to do exactly that. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like we have a, a coach who's usually set on, once he sets lines, once he sends the defensive pairings, that that's it. You know, he's been known, Pete DeBoer has been known, even in the middle of games, to change lineups. Yeah. Just to give it a, uh, some sort just of kickstart. Just give it a little different flavor, just to see things, you know, see how things work out. You know. Yeah, so, I mean, there's there's quite a bit there. There is. And, you know, the more we think about it, the more I, or we talk about it, I should say, the more my curiosity grows. Like, is uh, it's killing me. D- does this team have what it takes to get over the hump? Or is the lack of Joe Pavelski going to kill him? For that you know, I, I think I, I think I think the loss of Pavelski is going to hurt initially, but I think we're going to be okay because, you know, like you said, you know, moving moving Johnson up to that first line. I mean, it's not like we're talentless, and uh, you know, it's not like we're going to lose a, a whole whole lot by by Pavelski not being there. I think the most that we're going to lose out of him is is going to be that leadership and and that and you know and that. Uh, the grit that he brings, you know, he's kind of, you know, he was kind of like our, you know, Captain America, you know, he's kind of that, you know, you know, Steve, Rod, you know, he never ages. He's the, he's the ageist wonder. And, and there was kind of <laughs> something that, that we all kind of jumped on and, and, and got behind because, you know, that that's the kind of stuff, you know, sportsmen's like that type of stuff, you know? So yeah, we're going to lose, we're going to lose a little bit of that as far as like emotionally on the team and everything. But, I think in the long run, I think we're going to be okay. It's, it's crazy to think about because you would think the loss of two or three players that were kind of mainstays in Pavelski, even Smith for a while, obviously, the mm-hmm. little short while he was here, the biggest one you feel is going to be Pavelski, but then again, it opens up so much more room. So and you it got, gives the, it gives it gives the opportunity for some of these younger guys to come up. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to get at here. So you got you got Hence, you got Robertson and Johnston, you got Ben Dodonoff, and I'm drawing blanks on the lines. You could say Stankoven if you wanted to. Yeah. Oh, I think Stankoven's definitely going to factor in this season. 
I might have to agree with you. And then Radek Foxa being traded now. All because they paid him too much. Oops. Yeah. Like that that's gonna be the bane of our existence, I feel like, is you know and, and don't get me wrong, Neil's good at finding the balance of how much and when, you know, to pay people the right terms and whatnot. But Radic Foxa would still be here if they were a little bit more careful with him. And I mean <sighs> I know the Ben Dodonoff line is just missing one player. And then he got Hintz, Robertson, and Johnston. But I, I don't like having the next two, three lines uncertain. I yeah. Mean, and I mean, and let's not also, let's also not forget we've still got Maverick Bork out there as well. Yeah, but he's unproven. Like, unproven, but not really given opportunity yet, really. Solid point. I agree. I mean, you've got to be given an opportunity before you can even be proven. I mean, at one point, Wyatt Johnson was unproven. <laughs> at one point, Jamie Benn was unproven. Jason <laughs> Robertson was unproven. I, I, I'm not a big fan of the term of unproven. Because for me, to say someone's unproven means that they've been given a full opportunity to do anything, you know, do what they need to do. That's a solid point, sir. I mean, I would say, I mean, if you were to bring a player in for a full season, they really didn't do anything, I would call that unproven. Um, but to say that uh, because Maverick Bork hasn't really, sh- you know, we, we haven't ver- has seen very much of him, we do know he's a player. We know he's po- he's got, you know, skill. So, I think this opens up opportunity for him to come in and prove himself. How's that? I agree. And we do have Brendan Smith, who we brought in. Um, so he could fill in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. But I feel like Radic Fox, uh, I mean, besides de- beating the dead horse of Joe Pavelski retiring, I feel like Fox, Fox is not- definitely going to hurt. That one's yeah. that one's gonna hurt as well. I feel like that's gonna be your biggest blow, and I much rather would have had the fourth line being set in stone like we pretty much did. Yeah. You know, before you traded Fox, uh, all you were missing was who Smith. Yeah, I believe Craig Smith. Yeah, and the boxer trade, or losing boxer kind of almost came out of nowhere. Am I correct? I mean, it was kind of like, holy shoot, like, oh, yeah, I guess we overpaid him. <laughs> and that's the scary part because uh, let, let's turn it back to Stankoven. Okay, Stankoven just blows the doors off the joint in training camp, right? right. Lights up preseason, whatever. Um, he finds a way to eke into the main, the, the big roster, okay, has a monster rookie season. And then, you know, a season or two later, plays good enough to, to say, hey, I want a bigger contract. You got to use that Foxa thing, even though Foxa is not the same caliber, caliber player. To say, well, what did we do wrong here? You know what I mean? Like, because if you want to circle back around to my other favorite team, the Cowboys, they're known for overpaying people. Right. And then sending them away. You don't want the stars to be that way. And yeah, Nil might be a smarter manager than, yeah, we won't get into that person, but you still don't have as much money to play with in the NHL as you do any other league. And that makes it even worse. Like, you're going to overpay Fox. How did you manage to overpay Radic Foxa? How? Oopsie. <laughs> like, uh, he earned every penny of it, too. You know, he was... God, fourth liner. 
the whole time he was here, just about. Yeah. And then you just traded him. Dude, he could have been an anchor to this team. And now you got me scared for somebody like Stanko and Bork or anybody else that earns a spot. Like, uh, let's be real. Even though you have Ilya Lyabushkin brought in, you know, somebody else could come in uh, through the minor leagues and, and blaze his own trail in training camp and preseason and make the the big club as a defenseman too. You know, what about that guy? You're going to uh, – it just makes everybody – uh, what's the word? It, it puts more attention on management for me is what I'm trying to get at anyways. Yeah. You, you got to be careful. Like, you can't just keep sending people out left and right. There we go. That's the point. Training camp. It's where anybody can knock the socks off the, the GM and prove themselves and solidify a spot on the team I'd rather see that happen and have somebody knocked out that way than to see him overpaid and split. Bottom line. No, I'm right there with you. I completely agree. If if somebody knocked Radic Fox out of the lineup there, that's a lot easier of a pill to swallow than, oh, man, we paid him way too much. And it scares me. Like, I see social media posts in various Dallas Stars groups, you know, just fans, random fans saying that, oh, this new Smith guy, Brendan Smith, I believe is his name, uh, doesn't belong. Who is he? If you keep overpaying players, you're going to have a bunch of who? The whole rest of the time you're the GM of the Stars. I, this ooh, is true. God, it scares me, dude. At the same time, I'm extremely excited for August, September, October. Oh, my. What are you I excited for? Tigers and Bears, oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, yeah, I was trying not to say what I was really thinking there because I don't know how to censor myself. I don't know where the button is, so. <laughs> what? What about you, though? What are you most excited about for the Stars team? What are your hopes, your goals? What? Who do you think? Well, of- offensively, we've been really good and solid here in the, the past few years. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think we scored. Did, did we not score the most goals that we've ever scored in a season this last season? Am I correct on that? I believe so, but I don't have the yeah, stats. So, so offensively, I'm not. You know, there's nothing really that's, that's like got me going woo woo. Other than I'm I'm excited to see Stan Coven's, You know, this being his actual rookie season, kind of weird how NHL does that, but you know, and uh, I'm also excited <laughs> to see, uh, you know, Maverick Bork and see how he you know, he does uh, if he's given opportunities. Uh, I'm excited to see Johnson on that first line. I'm really excited to see you know Johnson. Uh, Robertson and Hintz. I thought we saw that a couple times this last season where they put the three of them together and it was pretty exciting. So I, I think I think I'm excited for that. But what I'm really excited for, and and I know, you know, this is gonna whatever, but I'm excited to see Dumba. I'm excited to see what he brings to this team. I wanna see if he can elevate our defense because our defense is really what needs to be elevated. Yeah. I mean, as long as you've been a fan and, and myself, what is Dallas most known for? If I'm not mistaken, I believe it's defense because Darian freaking Hatcher, Zuboff. Come on, people. Yeah. And now you got, I mean, I'm not going to compare him to Darian Hatcher, but you got as close as Darian Hatcher as you're going to get in Matt Dumba. For sure. Hatcher wasn't afraid to rough anybody up. No, Hatcher was, oh my God, Hatcher was frightful. Do you remember when he broke, uh, what was it, Jer- Jeremy Roenick's jaw? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he split it right in half. Like, that was wicked. 
I mean, I'm not saying Dumbo would do that. He probably has uh, the IQ to do better. The hockey sense, that's the word. I was going for hockey IQ. I guess it's the same thing, but I don't think Dumbo would ever intentionally do that much like Darian did not. But, I mean, he's not afraid to rough anybody up. Dallas on defense never did rough anybody up last year. No, we really didn't. And I felt like maybe you can back me up on this or maybe we have a difference in opinions here and we can discuss further. Maybe, what if, uh, I don't think Dallas really had the knowledge, the power, the know-how, whatever, to challenge people on defense. I, I feel like they just stood around and waited for a mistake. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And and once again, I'm going to go back to our defense. I, I feel like there was a lot of times where our defense was basically waiting for something to come to them as opposed to being the aggressors, which is what you want in defense. And, you know, you want those defensemen that are going to be ready to take the challenge on when, you're opposed, when your opponents are, you know, coming into your zone. And I felt I, I feel like I don't know maybe I'm wrong call you know call me out if you want to call me out but there were several times where I felt like our defensemen were basically just sitting back there waiting for you know the challenge to come to them instead of challenging those and you know possibly you know committing a turnover and neutral ice giving it back to the stars and I think that's one of the things that we've been missing there's not a lot of challenge in, in neutral ice. No, there's really not. Not from a defenseman, not from a forward. They just kind of waited. I mean, they would push them to the edge of the zone, the edge of the boards. Yeah. You know, push them up against the wall. But other than that, like, how many times do we say, man, we need better puck pursuit? We need yeah, better. Puck pursuit was definitely, and that's been a, an Achilles heel of ours the last two seasons. Really has. I think maybe. I think you have that in Matt Dumba. You know he's he's willing to go do what other people aren't. I don't know if that was a shot at anybody, and I don't or I don't know if maybe he was just saying you know you can count on me. But he gives you that vibe that things are about to change. Yeah. And I have the projected lineup here that I'm going to send to you, and maybe the next time you come on the show, we can discuss it, because, man, it is kind of (laughs) spicy. Could you imagine a defensive pairing of Matt Dumba? I think Matt Dumba could help S.L. Lindell. I just derailed my own thought, but that was a thought right there. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we keep forgetting about OSA there. Essel and Dell, Matt Dumba. Let's see. Mero Hayes can end Matt Dumba. Who else? I just said the dude's name and I've already forgotten about him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Yanni, Hawk and Paw. No, no, no. Other guy. No, not the other one. Uh, the, the guy that, that spent most of the time in the press box, me and Weldon even harp on him. What's his name? Uh, Lundquist. Uh, Lundquist, yeah, Niels. Niels Lundquist and Matt Dumba. Interesting. Very interesting. So we just ran through... Oh, wait, no. A lot of people question who Ilya Labushkin is. What about Labushkin and Matt Dumba? If you haven't seen his highlights, I encourage you to go to YouTube and look him up. So that we yeah, can... I don't think I have yet. Like I said, <laughs> I haven't gotten to look at too many highlights, especially of any of our newer players that we've brought in because, you know, I've been so between work and school and home life and stuff, it's just <laughs> I have neglected my arcade. I have neglected this. <laughs> I've neglected all kinds of stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's it's not that serious, but. You know, it does give us more to talk. Maybe I should write about it. That'll make it easier for you. There you go. 
because I know you read my stuff. Like, uh, well, hi, Weldon. <laughs> I know you're listening. You read my stuff, too. Maybe I should write about it. Get more people curious about who I believe in. Yeah. That'll get y'all looking. I think Labushkin on the stars with Matt Dumba would be interesting. I think Labushkin with Nero Hayeskin would be fun. But again, you know, the, the anxious guy inside me goes, aside from... What two lions? This team's uncertain. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but uncertainty uh, can sometimes be a positive thing. You know what? Do you remember the year that the Stars traded Brendan Morrow and like it took the world by storm? At least here in Dallas, or were you watching? That's yeah, funny you mentioned that. I was actually. Reading, somebody was commenting on that the other day about when we traded Morrow, but go ahead. That created open spots for people like um, Alex Chase on, for example, mm-hmm. and a bunch of people that were just kind of on the radar, but still uncertain. So maybe that's going to happen with the Stars. Maybe though we have one line for sure. Who are you going to put with Sagan now? Yeah. Do you go Ben Sagan to Don? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> ben Sagan to You Donna. just perked my ears up. Ben Sagan and Don off together? Ben, is, ben and Sagan used to be so close that they used to call those two the Benigan duo. So, let's see. Hence... Robertson, Johnston, Ben Sagan, Dodonov. That's still two lines of what in the world is going on. Uh, Sam Steele. And what if you were to what if you were to leave one line as kind of a floater line? You don't have a solid, say, third or fourth line. You just that line is basically, you know, you're going to fill in as the game flow goes. You see, that's where I think a guy like Ryan Reeves, because if we remember correctly, Ryan Reeves was not a guy that you saw very often. He was more used as a weapon. Mm-hmm. And I say his name for a reason, because to piggyback off what you said, if you can have a plug and play line or two like that, you can eventually find a secret weapon. Right. So, yeah, that's a solid point. Like, you can have those lions that plug in anybody and, and boom, they succeed. But, wow. <laughs> it certainly uh, opens up the thoughts to a lot of things, though, doesn't it? It does. Wow. Do they have what it takes to get over the Stanley Cup hump? I wonder. Things that make you go, hmm. Oh, (laughs) don't get that song stuck in my head. (laughs) (laughs) It takes me back to what year was that? 1990? 92, 91, 92, something like that. Oh, so I was a whole seven or eight years old, maybe six. Wow. (laughs) Oh, man, that song stuck with me for 36 years. Yike. That it, That's kind of the embodiment of this hockey team, things that make you go, hmm. Yeah. And, oh, my gosh. Dude, when is training camp? Like, it cannot come here fast enough. So what are you most excited to, to, to see? Uh, honestly, I want to see, <laughs> I want to see just how the young guys are managed. Like you got Maverick Bork and Stan Coven together, possibly. Can they rekindle their, uh, what's it called? Chemistry from the AHL. 
I think they can, but yeah, that's a solid point. Uh, that's a question I have and what I'm excited to see. Um, how's Matt Dumba going to factor in? I want to see him. The more we talk about it, the more I want to see him with Mero. And I couldn't tell you why other than, holy cow, that would be fun to watch. I think that's the, you just hit the nail on the head right there. And nothing against the, the play of the stars this past couple of seasons, but I just have a feeling this season is going to be a fun season to watch. Them. I think, uh, you know, seasons past, it's it's almost been kind of a, you know, you're watching and you kind of almost cringe a little bit watching them. But, you know, especially when, when, when you see the opposing team on a breakaway, I think this season, this is going to be a fun season. I mean, yeah, for the most part. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the biggest loss you have, at least that you can say, is the one people beat on like a dead horse, Joe Pavelski. Yeah, people are gonna beat on that one too. And and I, I and I hate to say it, I still think I still think we're gonna see Pavelski back for maybe a day because I think he'll wanna still retire from somewhere else, but that's just my thoughts. That's just hey. a, that's just a player in me coming out. He did say, though, that he gave some thought to coming back to the Sharks. And in an article I read, he said he, he thought about it because he might want to retire there, finish where he started, you know, that sort of thing. But he decided not to. So that's kind of wild. You know, that thought, like you said, could cross his mind as training camp. As the season goes, yeah. Yeah. Do you see him come back for... You know, as, as a Houston Texans fan, we're right now on the constant J.J. Watt. I mean, every other day I'm seeing an article about J.J. Watts and in game form and blah, 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 and this and another. And I think, yeah, it'd be awesome for him to come back. But do I think it's going to happen? Probably not. I mean, I don't know. I think it'd be fun... I, I definitely think it'll sell some tickets for sure for Houston, but you know, <laughs> but then again, you know, it, it's, it's kind of one of those things, you know, some, some players, it's, it's hard for them to, to, to put, to, you know, call it, call it a day. You know I mean? Yeah. It's easy to go out and do that first initial press conference, but when you're sitting at home and you start watching, we'll have to see what happens when the season starts. That That's all I'm going to say. You know, <laughs> well, Mike Madonna was the perfect example of somebody that had a problem hanging him up because the last part of his last season here, everybody was asking, is this the end for Mo? They did the video tribute, yada, yada. Then he came back for uh, Detroit, and they wouldn't give him his 1500th game. That is a bunch of malarkey, by the way. Detroit, you <laughs> suck for that. Um, He... Ended up calling it a career after a very limited time playing on the Red Wings. And it's just like, for the player, especially somebody of either one of their caliber where everybody loves them. Yeah. Do you really want to see that happen for them too? Like if he says he's going to retire, just let him be. I mean, unless he, it, uh, the telltale sign for me as if he stays in game shape, Joe Pavelski, because he can still tip with the best of them. He doesn't have to skate up and down the ice and be Superman. He can still make plays, but if if you see him in game shape come October or September, October, before the regular season starts, yeah, I think he might be coming back too. And yeah, no, I don't think it's happening. And San Jose, furthermore, doesn't even need him. They just signed Delandria. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going younger. I think they're going faster. I think they have their mission that they, they set out to do, and I don't think Mr. Pavelski is going to get signed to play for him, but he might be in a management role. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I just – the more we talk about it, though, the more I get excited about the stars, the more I get hopeful, the more I get curious, and at the same time, the more scared I get. Because what the heck is going to happen with this team? 
<laughs> kind of like a double-edged sword, isn't it? It is. Man, I've been a fan of one of those teams my whole freaking life, and I hate it. That same type of team. Oh, what's going to happen this year? They, Yeah, you know the deal. No, I don't want to see the Stars go down that route. I want to see them... That's what scared me about Joe leaving because I was like, oh boy, here we go. Now things are changing. Sure enough, they did. Just don't put them in the paper to be perennial Stanley Cup champions like some other teams around Dallas are supposedly the best team ever, blah, blah, blah. Don't do that, please. (laughs) Let the stars be what they're going to be and let the fans enjoy it. All right, I am off my soapbox. <laughs> I am off my soapbox for good. Well, at least until the next time we do a show. Then I might get back on it. Wait, do I? Yeah, it's kind of hard to get off that soapbox sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's why I'm thankful you're my co-host and, and Weldon too, because you help me. You you help me more than you'll ever understand. Like you keep the show going, you keep my brain on the track. Instead, of, I get so excited about this stuff and so curious that I get derailed. I don't know how many times. Like I just did it a little bit ago. So <laughs> a couple times a little bit ago. Like it's just I'm hopeful. I'm ready for hockey. I want to see my guys. That's all I know. And that's the same. Yeah, I, I think. Say again? And I can't blame you. Hey, dude, it gives me so much mental peace to watch somebody get their head beat in. How weird is that? <laughs> That's why I love football, too. Like, I don't care what the, the news reporters say. I just want to watch. Don't care. Yeah, I think we're all in the same boat there. We all just like the, you know... It's like watching the old gladiators of old. Of course, we're not watching people get hurt and killed, so we dang sure don't want to see anybody get hurt. But we love the hits, we love the scores. I like the ebb and flow of the games. I love going from the lowest to low in a game and thinking you're done, and then all of a sudden, like a couple seasons ago, when the Stars were giving us heart attacks with their comebacks every other game. Oh, shoot. They were down two and three goals, and they could come back with four. Man, that, those those are some hard. <laughs> if you had a heart condition, you didn't want to be a Stars fan at that point in time, I promise you. <laughs> no kidding. They would take you on a ride. If you like roller coasters, be a hockey fan. Yeah, if you, if definitely. If you were a roller coaster fanatic, yeah, that was, that was yeah, you, 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 you'd love that. <laughs> Somebody asked me, too. They're like, how can you love football and hockey? It's like, that's easy. You know, hockey is, they fight for every inch. They fight for the puck. They fight for the end goal a lot harder than any other sport, really. And you can see a guy like Rich Peverly have a heart attack on the bench, have his heart stop. What I think is that the actual thing that happened. Get right. revived go to the hospital and say, no, I want to go in. Of course, he didn't. But where else are you going to see that? (laughs) You're certainly not going to see it with LeBron James in the NBA. Sorry. Oh! He went there, shots fired, and I back him up on that. You might have with Michael Jordan. I I don't want to get into politics or anything on this show, and I hope what I say doesn't bother you. But the other day I saw a video where somebody took and timed it from the time that former President Trump was shot and went down. And they timed him, but how long it took for him to actually get up versus when LeBron James did not really get injured, nothing really happened, got knocked down to the ground, and how long he stayed on the ground. And, oh, God, it was crazy. I mean, it was hilarious. I think LeBron stayed down for, like, an extra 20 seconds over what former (laughs) President Trump did. (laughs) Uh, You know, and nothing against it. But, yeah, I I love watching hockey because, you know, you you know, 
you're not going to get a lot of the, the fluff that you do in a lot of other sports. Because <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know if I could watch. I think I'd have to stop watching the game if I saw one of my the players on my team. If you know, if I was watching, say, a Rockets game because I'm a Houston Rockets fan. But if if I was watching the the Rockets play and I saw one of my players flop to the ground like that, I think I'd have to turn. I don't think they're going to lose at this point. I can't. I can't watch that. <laughs> I mean, hockey's the kind of sport that they, they take a razor, a razor. They take a skate blade to the neck, a major vein, and they want to get put back in. Like, come on. Yeah. I mean, could how many how many NBA players you see playing with no no missing teeth? <laughs> I can't name a single one. No, I mean, I'm sure there's probably one or two of them out there, but you know. You don't see them very often. <laughs> Come to think of it, I can't even name a football or baseball player either. Uh, I can name some from the 70s and 80s. Okay, fair. But not modern day. Uh, yeah, modern day now. No. I mean... I, I think the, the best football story to me was Ronnie Lott when he broke his finger and had him cut the tip of his finger off, the broken digit off his finger during the Super Bowl because he was not going to get taken out. <laughs> you they don't make them that. like that anymore. I'm sorry. They <laughs> Look, I'm a pretty tough guy. And, yeah, I, I, my, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> I broke my finger at my job. I'm going home. <laughs> 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 Go home, put a cast on and lick your wounds, that sort of thing. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Dang. He says, he said, just go cut my finger off, huh? Yeah, just cut it off. Oh my they God. wanted to take him from the field. They wanted to take him to the emergency room, to the hospital, so they could reset it and whatnot, or take him to the back or something so they could do whatever. He said, nah, you ain't going to do that. Just cut it off. Oh my just God. Cut it off. See, I think that's dedication. I think oh, that's that, that is dedication right there. And unfortunately, that's that's something that a lot of modern-day athletes today, and I'm talking throughout the whole NFL, NHL, NBA, a lot of players are more for themselves than they are. You know, we're talking back then, it was, you know, going to the Super Bowl and winning the Super Bowl was the thing. Now... I, th- I feel like everybody says, because, yeah, it sounds good, oh, my goal is to win a Super Bowl, but I think, truth be told, if we were able to hook most of these players up to where we could actually see their true inner thoughts, it's, what's my biggest contract, how much am I going to make? And in some cases, what can I do to get that biggest contract? Yeah. It's, it's not so much of, hey, I want to I want to win this because I want to be, you know, champion you know, this is what I strive for. I think, and like I said, nothing against it. I understand it. Times change. People change. Yeah. And yeah, it is a business now. It is much more structured. Most sports these days are structured more as a business. But I still feel like the NHL still holds on to a lot of those. You know, we're here to win a cup, and that's that's our ultimate goal. I got into hockey to win a cup. That's why I got into hockey. I didn't get into hockey to get the biggest contract. And you can see that because there's some guys that will take lesser contracts to be on a team that they feel like they can win a, a cup with. So, I believe Joe Pavelski did just that here. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> and on that note, I do got to run though because I got to get back to school work. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and head off here too. And I, I, before we do, I want to thank you for your time, my friend. It means a lot that you take the time to do this. Always a pleasure. All right. Well, any parting words? Um, just looking forward to the off season. Um, any Stars fan that might listen to this, that might be on the fence or be you know questioning the thoughts of bringing Dumba in, I'm telling you, give the guy a chance. Um, we all make mistakes in life. Uh, yeah. Being a Christian man, uh, you know, I'm always taught to you know forgive and forget. And I've had to forgive a lot of things. And you know what? I, I forgive anything that he's done in the past as long as he can help this team. So, you know, let's do as a team, 
get behind him and, you know, give him a good shot. I'm going to back that. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Love it. All right, well. And on that note, go Stars. Go Stars. Talk to you guys later.